Welcome back folks. So we are almost nearing the end of this series. We learned a lot of basics, but one thing we haven't talked about much is how do we filter out data from our reports? So the primary goal of this lecture is to show you some advanced filtering techniques. So we're going to cover some concepts which will help you design um, you know, some basic reports, but at the same time, use some, some of the features that are available in Tableau, right? So there are many ways in which you can enabling some quick filtering. You can do some cascading filters. So one filter is dependent on another. You can actually control filters using parameters. Um, you know, you can kind of show some customized uh, messages in the graph, uh, some dynamic messages in the graph, and then you can pod, sort of put some reference lines and stuff. So um, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll look at a few examples that will possibly make these things more clear. All right, so let me go ahead and just open up Tableau. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to create a new data source and we'll just connect to our um, you know, SQL server, which we have been using so far, right? So I'm going to connect to the same data source and I'm going to select adventure works. And again, just a rewind for people who might not recollect what is adventure works. It's a sample database that is shipped uh, by Microsoft. So I have just installed that database, um, you know, in my SQL server instance. Now, uh, if you're interested, um, you know, in, in, in doing that as well, there is a separate course that I have in which I show you how to install these things. Um, I'll also put a link in the description um, or in the notes uh, so that you can follow along with me. All right, so let's go ahead and just uh, pull some tables. We'll, we'll, we'll use the same tables that we used in our previous lecture. So we use the purchase order detail, uh, not this one. So purchase order detail, I believe this one. And I think we use the product detail, right? Or just the product. So let's go ahead and use product and they will inner join. And then I think we use the product um, header as well. Let's see. Oh, it's actually purchase header. Yeah, I think we use this one. All right, so um, we have some data to work with and we are going to use this, you know, to kind of show you a few things. All right, so we have a blank worksheet right now, right? So let me go ahead and just create a basic report. So what I'll do is I will drop a couple of dimensions and let's see, let's drop color. Um, let's drop one more, let's drop name. And what else? Um, maybe the order quantity, right? So we'll have a few measures. Um, actually, let me also drop a list price also so that we have two measures and two dimensions, right? So we, in our previous lectures, we saw how to sort this and stuff like that. So I'm not going to go over that. All right. So now um, what we're going to do is we are going to drag and drop this class into these filters, right? And it gives me a pop-up as to, you know, what all classes should be selected. Now, the thing is that um, if you if you see, this is actually during your report design time, meaning users won't get this choice to choose. So you are actually designing this report and in the report you see that, say that, okay, show me just the data which belongs to class L and it'll actually filter that down, right? So you're making the report, um, um, you know, with that filter on, okay? Um, again, now if you want people to kind of, um, you know, dynamically interact with the report. And when you deploy the report, if you want people to actually choose, so you can, what you can do is you can just say show filter. And now this becomes available as a part of the report. And then people can choose whatever they want. And this report will dynamically reflect that. So that is one way of actually filtering. Um, definitely if you go here in the small downward arrow, there's a couple of options over here in which you can kind of um, design the overall filter panel as well. So say for instance, I want a drop down. I can use this as a drop down. I can say I want a drop down, but multiple values. So I can do this, but every time when I check or uncheck this, this gets refreshed. Now, if this has a lot of values, um, you know, the report loading becomes a little slow for that. I generally like to use this one. Um, customize and show apply button. So what it does is you can just select a few things and then click apply and then it will apply in one shot, right? So some pretty interesting stuff. All right, so let me just choose a couple more. Okay, 
Uh, the next one I wanted to kind of show you is now this is actually, um, you know, users can also do it, but you can use this as a shortcut when you're designing your reports. So one of the things is if you say, click on this particular attribute or dimension color black, and just keep your mouse there, hover over that, you, you see a couple of options here. And one of them says keep only and one of them says exclude, right? So if I say keep only, it will actually just keep those rows and it has automatically created a filter with that selection, right? So this is a, you know, a nice way to also do this. So even uh, when you deploy the report, a user could also do this, or you can just say exclude nulls and it'll just exclude nulls and then give you everything else. So that is kind of very cool. Um, so let me, um, all right, so let's do this actually. Let me show you how to conditionally filter something. So, Okay, I have a clear sheet now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you how to uh, add a condition, filter condition um, while you're creating the report. So I have just used color over here and then let me drag and drop a measure. I'll use the order quantity and maybe the received quantity. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to use this filter color and it's going to show me all the possible values. Now I'm going to use every value, but I'm going to say that show me just the colors whose order quantity um, is maybe, you know, greater than, greater than or equal to whatever, uh, say 10,000, right? So once I do this, you see that, you know, that particular condition is applied on the color um, filter. So that's that's pretty cool, right? So you can use some conditions as well. Um, the other thing I wanted to kind of show you is, um, you know, uh, using uh, cascading filters, right? So we have color right now, and let me actually even add a class, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to expose the class and color as filters, right? Um, so what we need to do is we need to make sure that whatever values we choose here and um, you know that should basically be passed on to this color filter, meaning um, only the applicable values um, that particular class has should be shown here. So let me go ahead and show that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that um, the, uh, the color filter, I'm going to say show only relevant values, right? So what it will do is basically, it will basically depend on the previous filter and only whatever are relevant and applicable values would be shown in the color, right? So imagine it this way, right? So if you have a, a geography filter, you have super region, regions, uh, states, countries, so on and so forth, right? So you can kind of create a waterfall model where you first choose a country and then only the relevant states within that country will be shown. Then you choose a state, then only the relevant cities within the state would be shown. Uh, you choose a city, relevant streets would be shown and so on and so forth. So it's kind of a cascading effect and hence we call it as cascading filters. So if you choose H, only the relevant values belonging to H will be shown. So it's a nice user experience because the user doesn't have to know which filter should be chosen. He only gets all relevant filters. All right, so this was pretty cool. Um, I wanted to also show you this new tab over here called analytics. We haven't really seen much of stuff in that. So let me go ahead and show that. All right. So, um, actually let me clear this and I'll just, uh, make something new. So I'll use the order quantity and let me just use some date, right? So I'll use the cell start date. Um, and, and by the way, I, I, I don't think I showed you this. Uh, you can actually use the exact date and basically say I will it as discrete. So it'll actually, you know, give you the entire date. Uh, by default, it will roll up to years, uh, but you know, you can kind of modify it that way as well. Right? So uh, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to plot this as a graph. So it will give me a graph, something like this. Right? Let me just quickly close this so that we have some room to work with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the analytics tab and I'm going to say, I need a reference line. All right. So let's go ahead and add a reference line and it, you, you have three options. One is table, pane and cell. Let's just start with something simple. So I'll click on this reference line 
and then say oops edit and I can go ahead and actually change this reference line right so I'm going to use this as say a constant and I want it to I want the reference line to appear on you know 500,000 right so it appears in 500,000 and then I know you can kind of even label it right um, you know, threshold reference line something like this right so um, generally this is used to you know I personally use it to show target so if you're plotting something like sales and then you can have a you know line which actually show, shows you what is the target and how much of the data points are above target and below targets and you, you get the idea right um, yeah another cool thing is um, you know we we even saw you know things about the marks over here there's a plenty of stuff you can do one of the things we really saw was definitely using the um, uh, you know the the label so you can go ahead and just drag and drop the order quantity and it'll actually show you the labels for it right um, if you also see there is this when I hover on this it actually gives a couple of information now this is fully customizable right um, you can um, you can actually do two things right so you can right click on this and then um, you can say annotate and then I'll say mark and I can actually write something over here right so I will do something like um, the order quantity if I can spell it right for the year is something like this right so when I click OK it will actually show you this as an annotation but at the same time you could also write a tooltip right um, but what we need to do over here is basically we need to customize this one this tooltip right so I'm going to actually write something this the order quantity for the year this is all right so this was basically a dynamic text that we are generating so once I click OK and if you hover on this you see that you know that that particular sentence is generated now I personally find this really helpful because when you are actually creating a report that is going to non-tech people and you know pure business analysts or um, you know business dev folks the more descriptive you can get and and the better story you can say in terms of sentences and stuff the faster they're going to understand so I generally use annotations tool tips to dynamically tell them um, you know how to read the data one of the things that um, I recently did which I remember is actually doing a year over year comparison so if you hover on a point it will actually show you this point is for this year and we are comparing it with year minus two something like that right so it's more descriptive and you can add additional information in it so you could say that um, as of today in 2017 the sales are this but if you compare it with 2015 the sales was you know why and the difference between that is 2017 minus 2000 so you can do all those calculations and actually write a simple story in the tooltip itself uh, so that it's more uh, descriptive uh, before we go again uh, this was I think this this is quite intuitive you can actually edit the axis and do a bunch of stuff and you can change the title uh, you can change these um, you know the units that the incremental units that you have you can keep it uniform you can keep it independent or you can keep it fixed and so on and so forth um, so um, that that's that's kind of very intuitive so I'm not going to go too much into it but I just wanted to show you that that facility exists as well so hope you got some basic idea regarding charts, annotations, tool tips, um, how to use reference lines and how to use some filtering. Um, now th this, will, th this is something that you will be using in, in your day to day life when you're actually using Tableau. All these things was pretty much a part of every report. So uh, I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching.